events due to the restrictions. This year, we are very happy to say that you will be with us, cheering our other delegates in what promises to be the biggest Miss Universe Philippines finals. Staging the first two editions were extremely challenging, but we are proud to say that amidst the pandemic, we were able to produce two amazing pageant finals and give the delegates a pageant experience of a lifetime. This is truly a momentous occasion, not just for our pageant, but for the country. Being able to do this event means that we are finally moving forward. If we can thrive in the pandemic, we are confident that post-pandemic, we can do even more for the pageant industry, the tourism industry, and the country as a whole. We know the impact that Miss Universe Philippines have on people. Industries and people are interwoven and we cannot separate them from each other. That is why we always try to use our platform for the greater good. Gatherings like this strengthen bonds and foster relationships. We continue to weave our contribution to society in ways that is beneficial to all. To be phenomenal, to be inspiring, and to be uniquely beautiful means you do things beyond oneself. So together, we can all achieve a brighter and better future. So thank you very much. And our candidates are all excited to see all of you. I'm sure you're all excited to see them in person. So take it away, Voltaire. Thank you, Shanti. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. It's nice seeing all of you again. How are you? Great, how are you? Never. I'm doing great as well. <laughs> yes, Sophia, how are you feeling now that your grade is coming to an end soon? Is it? <laughs> uh, I'm very happy and fulfilled um, for the short period of time that I did Miss Universe Philippines. I was able to do a lot of things and for our country, we were able to achieve the top five spot in the 70th Miss Universe. Um, that's something, uh, that's one of the cool feeling things that I was able to achieve during my reign. But other than that, I'm very happy for all the people that I was able to meet, um, the learning and uh, the learning experiences that I was able to um, acquire uh, together with all the other girls in this universe. And as well as my sisters in the Miss Universe Philippines, I'm very happy that um, I'm, I'm not leaving. Am I leaving? Uh, that I will be ending my reign uh, with very memorable experiences. So what's next for Bea? I'm sure a lot of people are wondering. <laughs> well, my, my reign might be ending on the 30th, but my contract is uh, ending on October. <laughs> I will still be with you guys for a year. So we'll have to go see for the next coming months. And what advice do you have for the girls in the other room who want your crown? Well, I'm, I'm going to share with them one thing that I, I've been doing uh, during my time in the Miss Universe Philippines. Uh, I wasn't one of the front runners, but I didn't give up easily on myself. Uh, there were times that I got discouraged, but you know, I I always come, go back to my core. I know what I'm capable of doing, and I remember all of my trainings. And I know that I am there not only for myself, but also for the people that I represent, for those people who are supporting me. So I try to remember all of those things, and the challenges that I go through, they become easier and you eventually overcome them. Um, as I mentioned in my final Q&A answer, uh, as long as you believe in yourself, you'll be able to overcome challenges. So that's one thing that the girls should remember and that they should um, value themselves for who they are and not for what other people are saying towards them. So they shouldn't focus much on comments and especially that um, we are in a digital age and these girls they are putting themselves out there in the public and to be criticized. I know it's hard, but they just have to believe in themselves. And I'll be the first to testify that whatever she said 
was really true because in the whole experience of Bea as Miss Universe Philippines, when we were in Israel, when it was crunch time, she stuck to her guns. She was always very authentic, she was genuine. What you saw when we said she was chill and casual and a silent killer, she was all that. And you know, she might not have you know, uh, racked up as many likes <laughs> or followers as other queens, but she was so true to herself, and I admire her for that greatly. Yes, and what's important is that you come out of this competition being yourself, but I mean, uh, you don't lose yourself uh, along your journey. That's one of the most important things to remember. So maybe at this point, I'd like to entertain maybe three questions from the media. For Bea. Yes. Hi, Bea. Hello. Happy to see you again. Last year at, at, at the stage of the competition, uh, what, what is your most valuable uh, thing for people? What is your most compelling reason? And another thing that I'm going to say. What is the most compelling reason to continue at this stage of the competition last year? I guess because I have something to offer. Um, there are things that I wanted to show to the whole universe uh, that I wasn't just. Uh, the empowered girl who joins pageants, who, um, who is poised and graceful all the time. Uh, I wanted to show them that poised and graceful women can also be women from the military, women who serve the public, uh, women who fight for things that they believe in, and one of those is being able to represent the LGBTQIA plus community. So that's one of the reasons that I wanted to continue um, being on the competition despite not being the front runner. Okay, and your best advice to your successor? My advice to my successor is that you know this this title was given to her because she deserves it. Regardless of what other people are telling her, she should believe that she has it. Uh, there will be times that you will be discouraged, but you have to believe that you got the position because you are qualified for it and that it is meant for you. Thank you very much. 9.99. <laughs> <laughs> and one last question. Hey, uh, hi. Um, you went to the host country last year in the most challenging day of all in Israel when all borders started closing. Uh, what kept you pushing or moving forward and, and trying to um, embrace all the positivity despite all the negativity happening around you? Well, the fact that I'm in a beautiful country, Israel at that, and I was already in Jerusalem uh, at the height of the lockdowns, I, I still consider myself blessed. I've gone way too far. I've sacrificed many things already and Mama J and Sir Walter were there with me so I didn't feel discouraged right away. And the Miss Universe organization uh, kept us safe the entire time. They assured us, although uh, I was kind of worried that the competition might be postponed like what happened to um, this world. Uh, I was kind of worried that it will also happen to us, but I'm very grateful that the organization pushed with the competition so that at least my, mo my momentum will still continue. And I was already very excited for the competition. I just wanted to give it my all when I was already there. And there was no reason for me to give up. Finally, what if the hypothetical end to be, uh, what if you were able to enter Israel? And then Voltaire, Mama J, and uh, Chancy, even to Albert, and Little Lloyd were not able to go past the immigration and they were like, um, no, no way you cannot enter the number, we're closed up. It's only like the past one. What would have um, left your own devices? What will uh, what would you do? How would you strengthen your defenses? Well, I've traveled to other countries by myself from before. Uh, that's something that isn't new to me, so I know how to survive on my own. 
And besides Mama J, they're both there. Uh, Miss Shamsi, they've already given me all of the training and the advices that I needed. Uh, I believe I already have all the weapons that they needed to survive and get past through the challenges in the competition. So I'm quite confident that regardless of what happens in Israel, even if I have to do it by myself, I know that there are people behind me, even if they're not there physically. Like my family and my friends, they weren't there, but I know that they supported me, so I will continue and go on, no matter what happens. <laughs> Before now, we we'll go to the girls. To add to that, even if we, even if we would not have been able to go in, we would have still found her luggage. <laughs> yes. That's right. Thank you so much, Bea. Thank you so much. You'll have more time later. You'll have more time later if you want to interview her after. I'll see you again later. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Bea. Thank you, sir. We'd also like to acknowledge former Miss University. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Board of Director, Fashion Council. Mr. Albert Andrada. <laughs> and now, I know you guys are so excited, and the girls are probably turning in their heels. Let's not wait, make, make them wait any longer. We have the batch, first batch, 